In today's Karimo challenge, we're going to be signing one player from every single Premier League club. So this is basically what we'll be doing in this challenge. We'll give ourselves five hundred million to spend we got to randomly choose one premier league club that we'll be using from which we can keep one player in our team the rest 19 of the players we got to sign individually from every single premier league club the team that we build we're gonna have to try and win trophies with it that's gonna be the challenge for today First, we got to decide the club we'll be using for the challenge. And this is going to be important because the club we choose, we get to keep one player from that club. So we're going to just randomize the club we'll be getting in the Premier League. So let's quickly do that. I'm pressing randomize now and it's going to be Spurs. I like that. Maybe we keep Harry Kane because strikers will be expensive. Okay, this should be fun. The team that we're going to build is probably going to be insane. So I think to spice things up, we got to put Spurs in the Champions League. So let's quickly go ahead and do exactly that. Okay, so we've chosen Spurs as our club for today's challenge. And that means we got to pick one player from this squad. That's the only player we can keep at the team. And I feel like it's got to be Harry Kane. Having a striker of his quality to build the team around would just help us out massively, guys. Son was a good shout as well, but... I think Kane being probably the most expensive player makes sense. We've only got 500 million to spend and we've got 19 other players to sign. So I think I'm going to go Kane from Spurs. Now, before we make the rest of the signings for the team, I'd really appreciate if you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe as well for daily FIFA career mode content. And let's get this underway. Okay, time to start off with our first signing. And I feel it's got to be the goalkeeper. You guys know how important the keeper position is in simulations and that's why i want to try and sign pretty much the highest rated keeper available now we've got a couple of options allison or edison the thing is man city have so many other good players around their team we could sign and i don't want to waste that one player on edison liverpool on the other hand although they do have salah Mane, and all attackers i think we can find elsewhere it's a tough one, guys, but I'm going to go Alisson for the Liverpool player. So we've had to pay 60 million to secure the Alisson deal, but we've got our man in net, which is awesome. There you go, guys. Alisson to Spurs, a done deal. We've got an 89 rated keeper, but now we cannot sign players from Liverpool. So, yeah, that's going to make things interesting. And there you have it. We've completed our second signing of this challenge, and it's Ricardo Pereira from Leicester City. And with that, we've ticked off our player from Leicester. I had to spend big to get him, but he was such a high-rated player from Leicester City. Sorts us out for that right-back spot. I had to do it. Now, the thing is, we've already spent upwards of 100 million or at least near that. And I'm worried we might run out of money because we need to, in essence, sign 19 players for this challenge. If we run out of money, guys, we've just got to use the players we've got and sim to the end and just hope for the best, okay? So I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. So we might have to start looking for some cheap bargains at other clubs. Talk about cheap bargains. This might be one of the ones that could help us complete the challenge. Um, Thiago Silva is somehow available for 2 million. I don't know how, but it is the way it is. I want to try and get him for cheaper. That's perfectly fine. We're going to sign Thiago Silva for 2.6 million and he's 87 rated. So Yep, these are the kind of bargain deals we need. And there's our Chelsea player ticked off. Am I going to regret spending so much money on fullbacks? Um, Hopefully not. We've just signed Lucas Digne from um Everton. That ticks off our Everton player. 35 million for him though. <sighs> I don't know, man. Hopefully we can keep a lot of clean sheets with the back line we're creating because we've spent a lot of money there. Let's clear up a couple of signings from the smaller clubs in the Premier League. I'm thinking we sign Ollie Watkins from Aston Villa to be a backup striker to Kane. Makes a lot of sense. We don't want to be spending a lot of money on a backup striker, so fits perfectly. I would have loved to sign Jack Grealish, but there are so many other good cams that we can sign. So I'm going to be skipping on him. So we'll sign Oli Watkins. Tarkowski is, I think, a very good pickup from Burnley. High-rated defender. Could be backup or maybe even first choice if needs be. So let's get these signings done. And there you go. We've wrapped up the Burnley and Aston Villa signings with Tarkowski coming in and Oli Watkins. Okay, now this could be one of the most stupid things I do or it could be absolutely brilliant. About 100 million spending that on Bruno Fernandes to tick off our Manchester United player for the challenge. We could have gone for maybe someone cheaper. Do we need to spend this kind of money? We might be left with a thin squad if we don't have enough money. So I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I kind of want to pull this off. Having him behind Kane, oh my God, would that be unreal. So let's get it done. And there you go. I've managed to complete the Bruno Fernandes signing. It cost us about 118 million. And look at the money we've got left, guys. Um, About 232 million. And we've still got so many players to sign. 
Man, I think we're gonna run out of money. We're ticking off another three clubs by signing Kenny Tete from Fulham, Bissouma from Brighton, and Ramsdale from Sheffield. You know, we'll get a backup keeper, potentially a backup midfielder, and a backup right back. Just makes sense. None of these signings are gonna be costing us way too much as well. So, yeah, perfect signings to, you know, get them out of the way. We've just made a couple more solid signings. One from Wolves for 38 million. This was expensive, but I wanted a quality midfielder. We've gone with Ruben Neves. And from Leeds United, we've chosen Rafinha. Again, super expensive. Maybe I could have gone for a better right winger from maybe a club like Man City or Arsenal or something like that. But I thought Rafinha would be fun. And yeah, that's what we're looking at right now. We've still got seven clubs to sign players from. And we're not looking at that much money. So we're going to have to be really careful. Honestly, I was struggling so much to choose the Man City player we should be bringing into the team. Because there's so many good players. And plus... We're lacking a lot of cash now. In an ideal world, I would have loved to sign Kevin De Bruyne, but I blew way too much cash early on. So Gundogan is the next best option. And to be fair, 86 rated. We could get him for like 40 million. I'll absolutely take it. So let's make this happen. And there you go. For about 40 million, we're securing Gundogan. I feel like this is a big signing. He's going to improve the midfield a lot. We just signed Gundogan, guys, and we're left with just 67 million. Um... That's going to create a fair share of problems for us. We still need to sign, I think, six players more from six different clubs. This is going to be a struggle. Just realize we're lacking a bit of depth with our attacking midfield. So Matthias Pereira from West Brom could be a really cheap bargain. Bednarek as well for some centre-back depth from Southampton. We could get him for maybe a good price. And Wilfred Zaha is probably going to be the last big signing we make from Crystal Palace. He can play on the left and we're lacking a left midfielder. So... This might actually burn all our cash and we may have to, you know, miss a few clubs or maybe just sign cheap players from there. So I don't know how this is going to go. Let's see. Just wrapped up the three signings, Zaha, Matias Pereira, and I decided to go for Salisu because he was available for a bit cheaper from Southampton. But have a look at this, guys. Somehow our budget has gone up to 70 million. That's probably because of season ticket sales. We've got three players to sign. A lot of money now. I think we can make some more big signings. Okay, so this is the aim I've got for my final three signings of this challenge. St. Maximin from Newcastle, Cresswell from West Ham. I so wanted to sign Lingard, man, but he's on loan. I would have loved to have Lingard at some position in this setup. But oh well, Cresswell for backup is what I'm going to go. We don't have unlimited cash right now. And Thomas Partey is the big signing for our midfield. That's what I'm thinking right now. Let's get these done. Now, we did kind of run out of money and that's why we had to compromise. And well, Miguel Almiron has been signed from Newcastle instead of St. Maximin. It's a pretty big downgrade, but it is what it is. We also signed Aaron Cresswell and we made the signing of Thomas Partey. With that, we've signed one player from every single Premier League club. Let's now take a look at the squad. So there you have it. This is the team we've built after signing one player from every single Premier League club. We've got Kane from Spurs, Bruno Fernandes in there at that camp spot, Wilfred Zaha, Rafinha from Leeds, Thomas Partey and Gundogan completing the midfield. Just from that look at the attack and midfield, I think we've done a good job. Defence, maybe we could have done a bit better than Thiago Silva and Tarkowski, but then again, it's so difficult, this challenge. You know, one player from a single club. Ricardo Pereira and Digne, they were great pickups. Of course, Alisson in net. Oli Watkins, Almiron, Neves, Bissouma, Ramsdale, Crespin, Saliso complete the bench. I've got to say, the bench isn't looking all that strong, so I'm not too sure if we've got what it takes to win the Premier League. But let's see. Top four, I think, would be a great achievement. So let's now sim until the end of the season and see how we can do in all competitions. So here we are at the end of the season, and I'm so eager to see what's up. You know, how have we done in the Prem? Because... I took a lot of time building that team, man. There was a lot of thought process that went into it because, you know, picking one player from every club with a fixed budget, you've got to keep in mind of a lot of factors. But anyways, let's see how things went for us. Okay, we get top four, which I guess isn't all that bad. Man City, 97 points. You really can't beat that. But the fact that we scored 93 goals, it was the defense that kind of caused us problems. You know what? I think that's not too bad, you know, for a team of just 20 individuals put together in a random team. Not too bad. Really not too bad. We lost the FA Cup. That's a real bummer. Would have loved to win a trophy. We lost the Carabao Cup as well. No way. Okay, what about the Champions League? Real Madrid beat Barcelona in the final. Wow. Did we even make it? We, we got knocked out 8-4 by Real Madrid. 8-4. 
What even is our defense man? Tarkowski and Thiago Silva were just leaking goals. I'm pretty sure it's because of Thiago Silva's overall dipping gradually throughout the season. Maybe that's where I messed up. Okay, this should clear things up a fair bit. Let's look at the stats. So, of course, Harry Kane's our top scorer with 34 goals in 44 games. Bruno Fernandes, wow. 29 goals for him as well. Zaha scored 23. Thomas Partey with 21. As pretty much a defensive midfielder, what's going on here? Ollie Watkins came on and scored 12, so that means that was a very good signing that we made. 4-4, four four, by the way, in the FA Cup. Digne with 11. Yo, that's another good signing. Rafinha with an okayish contribution. Gundogan as well, but we were a very high-scoring team, guys. Top sister, who was that? Thomas Partey and Bruno Fernandes tied for that record. Bruno Fernandes was the player who went up the most in terms of overall, going up to a 92, which is mental. Ricardo Pereira went up to an 87. But that's about it, really. I mean, it was a super fun challenge. I would have loved to maybe win one trophy with this team. That would have been worth it, especially like losing both the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup finals was, yeah, kind of painful, I suppose. But it was the defense that let us down in this challenge, 100%. We, we should have, you know, invested in a better centre-back because uh, Thiago Silva and Tarkowski weren't the play. Probably Thiago Silva mostly because he was dipping in his overall from day one. So that was kind of the mistake we made. But apart from that, I think it was a pretty good success, you know, this challenge. Had a lot of fun recording this. If you guys enjoyed watching this as well, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.